All right, so I'm going to go through this problem for vari variable length subnet masks so that we can use one network address. I'll use the network address 172.1.0.0 and break it up into subnetworks for all these different um, LANs and then two WANs. All right, so what you need to do first is you need to determine uh, the networks that you have from greatest to least. So I have a 6,000 host network, let me my first one. Then I have 3,200 hosts. Then I have, let's see, 200, 100, 80, and then 10, and then I have two WAN links right here, so those two. So they both require two, ad or two um, IP addresses. All right, so this is my starting network, 172.100. The first thing I need to do is I need to determine what my CIDR is going to be for this network, all right, for 6,000 hosts. The way that you do that is you look at your host portion of this address. I'm going to look at it in binary. In order to determine your range. So let's see, whenever you're looking at range, we start with 2 to the 0, which is 1. 2 to the 1 is 2, so 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128, you got 256, 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, that's as high as I need to go, okay, no wait, no, I have a 6,000 in there. So it's 8,192. Okay. All right, so that's the range of our bits. It goes up exponentially. We also need to know our CIDR values. So this one here is going to be slash 17, slash 18. I'm going to do every other one so I don't run out of space. Slash 19, 20, slash 21, slash 22, slash 23, slash 24, slash 25, slash 26 slash 27, slash 28, slash 29, and slash 30 is the highest you can go. So let me cross these off so they don't get confusing. Okay, so I'm going to start with the ad, or with the network, sorry, 172.1.0.0. And the way I determine my CIDR is I look and see uh, my range. So up here, let's see, slash 23 is 512, slash 21 is 2048, slash 20 is 4,096, slash 19 is going to give me 8,192 addresses. So slash 19 will be my CIDR. Now to determine your next network, you have to look at your magic number, which is the value of your bit. Okay, so I just, I'm right here. I have borrowed these three to get to slash 19. The value of that bit is the 128.64, 32 bit, okay? It's in my third octet. So let me say my magic number equals 32. So I'm going to add that to my third octet in order to get my next network. So 172.1.32.0 is my next network. Then I start all over. I look at my range, which is going to be 3,200 hosts. I look up here to determine what my CIDR is going to be. 2048, that's not enough. I have to go to 4096. So slash 20 gives you 4096 addresses. All right, your magic number is 128, 64, 32. That's going to be the 16 bit. So 16 is what I count by in my third octet. So my next network will be 172, 1, 
And then 32 plus 16 is 4248.0. And then you start all over again. Now I need 200 addresses. So if I look up here, slash 24 gives me a range of 256. So that's what I need, slash 24. So I'll go all the way up to the 24. I like to sort of follow along so I know where I'm at so I can keep my magic number straight. My magic number equals one. The value of the bit right there is one. So I'm going to add one to my third octet. So my next network will be 172.1.49.0. Now I need a range of 100 hosts. So I'm gonna look over here, slash 25 gives me a range of 128. So that will be enough, slash 25. My magic number is 128. But this is where it changes. I'm Now I'm in my fourth octet. So I add my magic number in my fourth octet. So my next network is 172.149.128. Okay, the next network I need 80 hosts. So if I look here, 64 won't be enough, so I'm still at that slash 25, which means my magic number is still equal to 128. So I'm going to add 128 in my fourth octet, but you'll notice 128 plus 128 gives you 256. Well, the highest value is 255. So what that what that means is you add one in your third third octet, and your fourth octet becomes zero. So 172.1.50.0. Okay. The next. Um, uh, network, I need 10 hosts. So let's see, that's 64, 32, 16, 8. Oh, I got to do the 16. 8 is not enough. So that's going to be a slash 28. My magic number is 16. That's the value of that bit right there. So I'm going to add that in my fourth octet. Now I need two WAN links, which just requires a point-to-point -point connection, so you need two hosts, okay? Now, a lot of people will look up here and they'll say, okay, two, that's what I need. But remember, whenever you're creating networks, you always have to subtract your network address and your broadcast address, so you always subtract two from the host portion. So in order to have two usable hosts, I can only borrow uh, up to this slash 30 which makes my magic number four. So my range is four. Whenever I subtract two from that, I'll have two usable hosts. So slash 30 is the highest you can go for your CIDR. Um, so my next network, we got 20, and that also will be slash 30. Um, and then you would Start with your next network, which we don't need it, but I'll write the leftovers. 172.1.50.24 through 172.1.255.255. All of those are left over. That's quite a few addresses left over. All right, so the key when doing VLSM is take your addresses or uh, the, I guess the host ranges, and list them from greatest to least. Then you're going to look at your CIDR in order to determine your range. So if I need 6,000, I look and find my range of 6,000 at least, and then I would use that for my CIDR, and then look at the value of the bit, which is different. The values always stay the same in order to determine my magic number. The magic number is what you use to find your next network. Okay, so remember the value of your bits are always the same no matter what octet you're in. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, 32, 64, 128. The values always stay the same. So when you're looking at a class B address, you have, this is your host portion. And that's what we're looking at over here in binary. In order to determine what bits we need to borrow 
for our networks. So then you would go up here and you would label your network. So the 6000 network, that's the H network, will have all of their hosts on 172.1.0.0. So they can have everything from 172.1.0.1 through 172.1.31.254. So that's a lot of addresses, 8,000. 190 addresses to be exact. So that's what you would use for all the hosts on this network. And they would all have a subnet mask um, of 255, let's see, slash 19 is the same as writing, let's see, slash 19, is the same as writing 255.255, I'm gonna run out of space, dot, let's see, 128, 192, 224, dot 224, Dot zero. So they would all have that as their subnet mask on the network. And that tells this router which portion of the address is, address is network and which portion of it is the host. Okay, so you might see a problem um, like, let's see, where would you find host, um, where is host, 172 dot, let me find one. 1.48.50. Where's that guy at? 172.148.50. And you'd have to work out this problem in order to determine what network that host is on. Is it on the A, B, C, D, E, F, G, or H network? Well, if you look at your list, 172.1.48.50 would be on this 200 range networks that would be on the G network so that would be your answer G okay so that's the types of questions you would have for VLSM is uh, you'd have to find where this host is you'd have to answer true or false questions if uh, networks would overlap that kind of thing so it's help it's helpful to know how to work it all out and hopefully as you get better you can do most of this stuff in your head and just throw the network's up there, so it you know won't take you nearly as long um, on like your CCNA certification exam. So, um, hope that helps.